Thank you for joining us for today's Coffee Break webinar. Today's topic is Recreating Irregular Heartbeats with Patient Cells and Gene Editing. The human heart typically beats 80 times in a minute, 115,200 times per day, or in other words, 42 million times a year. So if you live to be 80 years old, your heart would have beaten approximately 3 billion times. The rhythmic beating of the heart is attributed to the interplay of numerous ion channels expressed in the cardiac muscle. These ion channels underlie the excitability, also known as the action potential, which initiates cardiac muscle contraction. Long QT syndrome, also referred to as LQTS, is a condition which affects the repolarization of the heart after a heartbeat. This prolonged repolarization of the heart is observed as a lengthening of the QT interval in the electrocardiogram, hence the disorder's name. LQTS can arise from the mutation of one of several genes. A common type of LQTS, LQTS2, arises from a mutation in the human etheragogo related gene potassium channel, which is responsible for curtailing the cardiac action potential. A long QT interval can upset the careful timing of the heartbeat and trigger dangerous heart rhythms, which can result in fainting, seizures, or sudden death. These episodes are often triggered by exercise or stress. In this webinar, Dr. Vincenzo Macri, senior scientist at Stem Cell Technologies, demonstrates how the stem cell culture and gene editing technologies being developed by his lab can be used to recreate these patient heartbeats in a dish. Thank you for the introduction, Melissa. As mentioned earlier, I'll be discussing how we can create irregular heartbeats with patient cells and gene editing. Making human pluripotent stem cell derived cardiomyocytes is technically challenging. Stem cell has developed a media kit so you can efficiently make human pluripotent stem cell derived cardiomyocytes in your lab. Our stem diff cardiomyocyte differentiation kit can take high quality human pluripotent stem cells and differentiate them to a confluent monolayer of beating cardiomyocytes within 15 days. Our differentiation kit produces greater than 80% CTNT positive cells and one kit can generate well over 50 million cardiomyocytes. Our stem diff cardiomyocyte system consists of a differentiation kit maintenance kit, and dissociation kit. In this webinar, I will present data showing how our stem diff cardiomyocyte system and Maestro MEA system can be used to model long QT type 2 syndrome. Microelectrode array can be used to measure the excitability of cardiomyocytes. The excitability is measured as a field potential. The field potential is similar to the action potential observed at the single cell level and similar to a clinical ECG. They share some similar phases. For example, sharp upstroke or depolarization phase. After the depolarization phase, beat timing and arrhythmias can be measured quite easily in a microelectrode array. We use the microelectrode array system to track the performance of HPSC differentiation to cardiomyocytes. Using a 48 well side of view plate, we seeded down human pluripotent stem cells into each well of the plate. We then differentiated those cells and tracked excitability in real time from days eight to 26 of the differentiation and maintenance protocol. Using our stem diff cardiomyocyte differentiation kit, we were able to successfully track excitability using the Maestro MEA system during the HPSC differentiation process to cardiomyocytes, as well as maintenance of those cardiomyocytes. Using two ES and two IPS lines, we observed the onset of consistent excitability metrics at day 14. 83 to 100% of the wells contain regular beating 
cardiomyocytes with very consistent excitability profiles up until day 25. Variability across those lines were small with respect to the beat period and the field potential duration, and we saw less than 10% beat period irregularity across the four HPSC lines. In the previous slide, we showed that using the stem diff cardiomyocyte differentiation kit produces HPSC-derived cardiomyocytes with reliable and consistent excitability profiles across multiple HPSC lines. We next wanted to model the long QT type 2 syndrome, which is due to a mutation in a HERG channel. The HERG potassium channel is required for cardiac repolarization. Figure A shows the ventricular action potential. The ventricular action potential begins with a rapid upstroke or depolarization phase, followed by a slow repolarization phase. The Herg potassium current is an outward current shown in blue. When there is a mutation in the Herg channel, the outward Herg current can be reduced, shown in red. The reduction in the Herg current results in a prolongation of ventricular action potential. In figure C is a surface electrocardiogram. When there is a mutation in the Herg channel which produces less outward Herg current, we can see that this shows a prolongation of the QT interval. It can result in the onset of Toussaint de Pointe. To disrupt the Herg potassium current, we use the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing system to target the PAST domain, which is located in the end terminus of the Herg potassium channel. We created an IPS line that carried a 4-nucleotide deletion in the past domain which resulted in an early stop codon. We next generated cardiomyocytes using our control and HERG edited isogenic HPSC lines using our stem diff cardiomyocyte differentiation kit. On day 18, we used our stem diff cardiomyocyte dissociation kit to harvest and replate the cardiomyocytes into the site of view MEA 48 well plate. On day 28, we took our first measurements of the field potential signals from both the control and HERG edited HPSC derived cardiomyocytes. Here we show images of the control and HERG edited HPSC derived cardiomyocytes on day 28 in the site of view MEA plate. Next to the images are field potential signals recorded from the HERG edited and control HPSC derived cardiomyocytes. We can observe that the HERG edited HPSC derived cardiomyocytes have a prolonged FPD and beep period compared to the control. The HERG edited cardiomyocytes show an expected increase in FPD as a result of the heterozygote mutation in the HERG channel. Here we show field potential recordings for the control and the HERG edited HPSC derived cardiomyocytes for a 45 second period. We can observe that the control HPSC derived cardiomyocytes show a stable and consistent field potential signal However, for the HERG edited HPSC derived cardiomyocytes, we observe the delay in repolarization, a variability in beat period, but also the onset of spontaneous rapid beating, which resembles Tressaud de Pont. We next want to model the long QT type 2 syndrome using patient derived IPS lines and the stem diff cardiomyocyte system. We obtained the IPS lines from the Fraser lab at UCSD. This family has a heterozygote point mutation in the distal C terminus of the Herg ion channel, which results in an early stop codon. We obtained the unaffected grandmother, 2 6, and the affected granddaughter, 2 1. Here we show images of the HPSC-derived cardiomyocytes generated from the wild-type 
and the long QT type 2 patient derived IPS lines. On day 28 of our differentiation and replating protocol. Next to the images are the fuel potential signals recorded from the HPSC derived cardiomyocytes. We can observe that the 2.6 control line or wall type line has a stable and predictable excitability profile. However, 2.1, who's the carrier of the heterozygote point mutation and exhibits long QT type 2, has a prolonged FPD compared to the wild type and a prolonged beat period. During this webinar, we've shown that the long QT type 2 syndrome can be modeled using IPS lines that have different genotypes. The future of these clinical trials in a dish lends itself to experiments where one could predict drug responsiveness based on the patient's genotype. Therefore, we can use a precision medicine approach to guide the drug selection for the patients based on their genetic background. In summary, I've showed you that the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing system can be used to target HERG to produce HPSC-derived cardiomyocytes with the expected long QT phenotype. Cells derived from patients with long QT also produce HPSC-derived cardiomyocytes with the expected phenotype, for example, the prolongation of the field potential duration. The stem diff cardiomyocyte system is efficient and robust method to produce many HPSC-derived cardiomyocytes that can be used for disease modeling. And the Maestro Multi-Well MEA system allows for the tracking of HPSC cardiomyocyte differentiation and excitability over hours, days, and weeks label-free and in real time. I'd like to conclude this coffee webinar by acknowledging uh, the groups of people who have contributed to this work at Stem Cell, our R&D and marketing group, and in particular, Adam Hurst and Jessica Norberg, and from Axiom Biosystems, Stacy Cavadal and Mike Clements. Thank you for listening. And that is the conclusion for today's Coffee Break webinar. If you have any questions you would like to ask regarding the research presented, or if you are interested in presenting your own research with microelectrode array technology, please forward them to coffeebreak at axionbio.com. For questions submitted for Dr. Macri, he will be in touch with you shortly. Thank you for joining in on today's Coffee Break webinar, and we look forward to seeing you again.